Hey you guys, and thank you for watching my channel. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. All right, hi you guys, and thank you for watching my channel. Okay, sorry about the big old headphones. <laughs> I do apologize. I was checking out my voice, seeing how it sound. Um, going back to using the mic, of course, today. Now, whew, today's story time is going to be something I think I pre-recorded last year, but I'm not sure. I cannot find the video. So just in case, I'm going to record it again, okay? So this is about one of the many corporate jobs I've had. And I'm not going to say the name of the company in case I ever decide to work for them again. I, <laughs> You know, you never know. But let's get into it. So at this time, it was 20. It was late 2018 or early 2019. One of those because I had gotten the job in April. I had went through the six months of training or at least that's what it felt like. And I was on the floor actually doing my job. Now, I'm not going to lie. Working in corporate definitely brought me a big sense of pride because you never realize how important that job is until you are in the role. OK. Um, until then, you're just like, oh, yeah, this is some bull. Now, a lot of people didn't know that we were corporate employees, so they assumed we was a call center. So they would call us talking hella shit. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> I hated that part. I hated the verbal abuse on the phones. I hated that. So I preferred to like send emails and stuff of that nature as long as I'm off the phone because I don't know, the abuse was, it was unexpected. I didn't realize how racist the world was until I started working in corporate. Like, I'm not trying to be funny, but my coworkers that have like Indian accents or Spanish accents, they're always being told, I want to speak to someone that speak English. And they're like, I was born and raised here. <laughs> you know, I just have an accent because I'm bilingual. They're not going for that. So, yeah, it was it was kind of tough on us. But for me, it was I'm not going to get into too much because I have a story time about every single racist situation I've been in while working at this company. And then I have story times about how they actually started to fix, like fight the racism after they got sued. Of course, not before while we were all complaining after they got sued, they started trying to um, pretend. Oh, my God. Let me tell you, all when they got sued sue for racism our co-workers the 1099 co-workers because if you work in corporate you know what 1099 stand for i can't tell too much specifics because i don't want to get in trouble <laughs> but the 1099 co-workers was in the youtube comments and on the news station comments like there's no racism there's no racism here yeah nine times out of ten if you are not feeling the racism haven't seen nobody that experienced the racism you might be the racist or you are just not one of the people that are getting the racism, okay? If you get what I'm saying, you get it, you get it. So yeah, this job used to have us in an emotional turmoil. Like a lot of people was just working for corporate until their schooling was paid for in full to go switch to starting their own company underneath their degrees, which is sad. Your turnover rate shouldn't be that high. You shouldn't be allowing people to experience that much abuse where they feel like that. So Anyways, I'm going to insert a picture here of what I look like on said day because I was looking good. Okay, I was looking good. So <laughs> I come into on this. Oh, I forgot to tell y'all. I used to ride the train into work. So on this day, I go into work at mm, what time? I think it was like 6 a.m. I'm pretty sure my shift started at 6 a.m. And I would ride my drive my car to the train station, get off get out the car go get on the train and it would be roughly about 30 45 minutes and i'd be there but this was back when the train station used to be packed so some days it would take like an hour and 15 minutes to get to my stop because of how long it took for traffic to get on and off the train so the train ride was good it was you know as expected it smelled like vomit juice but oh i didn't mean to cuss it smelled like vomit and you know so i get I get to work. I'm walking in. This is pre-COVID, so there's no mask, no nothing. I'm saying my good mornings because, as y'all know, I had got reported by several co-workers for not saying good morning. So I say my good mornings, and obviously I said it to my friends, then I said it to the people that reported me. And I go to my seat, and I start setting up my desk. 
Now, this was back when we all had our own desk. So by setting up, I'm just pulling out my food because I used to snack my entire shift. Now we have a shared workstation after COVID. Before COVID, we did not have shared workstations. You had an assigned desk, which I preferred. Okay, I love that. I loved having my pictures on my desk, um, my decorations, my decor. I don't know. It felt good. It don't feel good no more coming up in there. It just feel weird. But yeah, so... I'm pulling all my stuff out my bag, getting my snacks together, because of course I had a Reese's, some hot fries, a salad, and dinner. Yeah, I had a lot. So, after all of that, I start taking calls. Now, the calls are going pretty, pretty quick. Um, not too many issues, not too many serious calls. And I recall I got this call, and it was this lady, and she was in utter tears okay she was in tears and I'm like oh my god what's going on how may I help you you know showing empathy showing empathy okay and then she lets me know that her house just caught on fire she doesn't know what to do her and her family are outside it is Friday it is Friday meaning whatever she wants to get covered she has to pray that she is somewhere that she can go up until Monday when business places are open to take those calls for her to get services and assistance with housing and stuff like that of that nature hold on one second because it just got dark outside okay we're gonna ignore the lighting okay that's what we're gonna do so so the video looks so much better here as opposed to here because of all the shadowing from the lighting but that's okay let me see if I could okay so now of course don't get me wrong that's not how I answered the phone that was after my formal greeting and everything so me and her talking I'm just listening to her story because a lot of times when people call in they just want to vent now mind you if you're on a call for over five minutes your manager will start listening in on your call because they're like what are you doing you only get five minutes per call then it starts to affect your metrics of course if it affects your metrics oh hold on my phone was about to die y'all my phone was about to die so of course if it starts to affect your metrics once it starts to affect your metrics it affects your bonus and your raise so at that point you're looking at a lower bonus lower raise you got to keep them calls to five minutes if you want your raise your bonus and etc to be what you want it to be or what you need it to be so yeah so me and her just talking i'm just listening and she's like yeah me and my family are just outside we have nowhere to go we have no family in town my kids have school in the morning what am i supposed to do and so we start going over resources I call my manager. My manager was like, you have to call her assigned 1099 because they are over her account and they are basically her caseworker. And they have to actually contact their emergency departments to get her immediate assistance. And so I'm like, okay, so here's the thing. I know where you're living, where you live at. It is now, she, let me tell y'all, she talked for like 50 minutes. And I don't mean no hard feelings or nothing, but had she just said her house caught on fire, she needs emergency assistance, I would have been able to reach out to my manager in her 1099 in an orderly fashion before 5 p.m. when they close. She talked for so long, and it's understandable because her house just caught on fire. She wants to vent, but she talked for so long that it was now five minutes after five. So I have no way of knowing if their office is still open. I have to call them. So I was like, look. I understand you need immediate assistance. I'm definitely here to help. Hold on one moment. I'm going to call your assigned 1099 and see if we can get some immediate assistance going. She was like, I called them. They didn't answer. And it's crazy because me and her are close, close, close friends. Like, I'll come to her house and she'll come to my house. She comes to all my cookouts. And... um. What else did she say? She was like, and if anyone passes in the family, she's bringing flowers. And I'm like, oh, okay, so you two have a close relationship. So she should move this along pretty quickly. And I know, I know that sounds bad, but a lot of times they move stuff along quickly for people they're a lot closer to. And it's sad to say, but it, it it's a world like that, unfortunately, because it's very common. So I was like, hold on one moment and I'll go ahead and reach out to them. Now, once she's done with that ramble, it's now like 510. So I'm calling their office. No answer. Um, usually the office will give an emergency line. It didn't. Understandable. 
And I checked my, um, I checked with my manager. My manager was like, reach out to them on their emergency line stat because she's going to be outside for three days, technically three nights. So I'm like, okay, okay. I'm going to go ahead and reach out to their emergency department. I called the emergency line for that office. Of course, it goes to the 1099 cell phone number. So she answers and I'm like, hi, this is Kay. And I'm calling in regards to blank 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 her home just caught on fire and she needs immediate emergency assistance and of course you are the only one that can provide that and go ahead and get that case going now mind you for fires it's a petty cash system that can be used for immediate assistance that's reimbursed later as long as the 1099 has opted in for that service right and the 1099 i want to say her name so bad y'all she made me so mad i still remember her first last name at <laughs> where her office is located at because you know stuff like that stay in your mind and it just be rewinding like ah, did she really do me like this but she did so um she was like, I was like, hey, I understand that you two are really close friends and I definitely get that you're off work at this time, but she's in the midst of a, a house fire. Her house is burning down as we speak. The fire department was in the background of the call and she needs emergency assistance. And she was like, why are you calling me? What am I supposed to do about it? I was like, my manager stated that you all have the emergency um y'all have expedited emergency services so that way she doesn't have to wait until monday morning because our our claims department was closed it, she talked for quite a while claims is closed now unfortunately yeah so um she was just like well what am i gonna do about it i'm off we're closed it's the weekend this is my time don't call me on my cell phone during my time I was like, y'all, like her tone of voice was so condescending. You could tell that she was trying to little girl me. And I don't know what's up with the 1099 representatives, but why do they think that we are a call center? We are corporates. We are corporate. We are not a call center. We are corporate. And they just be talking to us like dirt underneath their shoe, like trash on the ground. So she's going in and I'm like, look, I definitely understand that you are off at this time. So are you saying that you're not going to be able to assist? She was like, do not call me on my emergency line or my cell phone number anymore unless somebody is dying or dead i can't assist you and i was like why would we call you if she burnt to death in the fire like that doesn't even make sense why would we call you like i'm not trying to be funny but at that point it would be so much hysteria going on you would be the last person on our minds to call so i'm just like you know oh i'm not supposed to be cussing i was like mm, this tramp has a bad attitude let me get off the phone with her before i say something and it come back on me so i'm like okay i definitely understand i end that call i get back on the line with the representative and i was like hey i was not able to get in contact with your agent because i'm not about to tell her this lady says she don't care she's not doing nothing don't call her unless the lady is dead i'm not telling her that she's already going through enough she doesn't need that right now so i was i let her know i'm like hey um she did not answer the phone i was not able to get in contact with her i greatly apologize you will have to give us a call back monday morning for during business hours for immediate assistance because now it first of all her house got on fire instead of calling claims she called corporate spent 50 plus minutes venting on the phone to the point where claims was now closed she would have done a lot better just going ahead and calling claims she was like oh my gosh she didn't answer did you try texting her should i try texting her can you give me her number i was like look i can't give you her emergency line but since she comes to your house often and y'all have parties have you tried calling her on the number that you usually speak with her on and she was like actually yeah i called and texted her cell and she did not answer i was like okay so i was like okay well i do apologize let me go ahead and get you the number for claims department that way you can contact them first thing monday morning i provide her the number i told her to go ahead and file her claim online and then call monday morning for the expedited services that they're able to do during business hours and that's what happened me and her get off the phone i know take the call i was like so and so called in due to home catching on fire contact the agent via 
emergency contact number agent stated do not contact her again unless the policy holder is dead or dying period mm -hmm. and i went on about my day <laughs> i go on about my day y'all i'm enjoying the rest of my day i felt bad for that lady but i was like i gotta bring my spirits back up so me and my co-workers we had our little mental health meeting that we would do every now and then when agents were being too much doing too much and the agents are the 1099s just in case you're not catching that so we go to our mental health meeting we decompress for the day we kumbaya we eat together then we go back to work after our lunch break and we're just knocking them calls out monday morning remember that was friday that was friday I had a blast of a weekend. This was during my, mm, you know, so I had a blast of a weekend. I come back into work on Monday morning and my manager pulls me aside and she's like, hey, you've been reported. Oh, I meant to tell you all. After what she said, I reported her to my manager. Yeah, I sure did. I sure did. I reported her because if this call falls, first of all, her house is on fire. That means that when she calls in Monday, she's going to be pissed. So I had to provide somebody that is my superior the full scope of the entire call. That way I wouldn't get into too much trouble when she calls in to file her formal complaint. Because who wouldn't? I know I would. When she calls to file her formal complaint and her claim on Monday. So my manager's like, you've been reported. And I'm like, reported by whom? For what? And... <laughs> What are we going to name her? We're going to name her George Lopez. She going to know. She going to know. So they was like, <laughs> they was like, well, you've been reported by George Lopez. It says that you humiliated her in front of her entire office. I'm like, humiliated her? How did I humiliate her? I didn't even call her out about none of y'all. When I tell y'all, I used to, this job F up my mental so bad i used to be so zen so calm so serene like i'm just i used to just brush everything off i didn't deal with too much i didn't dwell on anything this job really messed my head up because it was so much overthinking you had to do for this popularity contest of a, of a job that uh, yeah i'm gonna leave it there but yeah she was like george lopez reported you for humiliating her she stated that you left derogatory remarks in her office notes i'm like office notes what do you mean her office notes y'all y'all <laughs> so they our note-taking system both systems the 1099s have access to so while I'm thinking I'm leaving a detailed note for the next person in my department that gets this phone call, so that way when they get cussed out, they know why. The agent in her entire department could see it. So when she called them on Monday and went off on them for not answering none of her calls and texts or in emails, and they pulled up her account, the first thing they saw was my note about her stating don't call her unless the person is dying or dead apparently her staff felt some type of way about her after i left that in the note because that's her friend she's at this girl cookout she's at her kids birthday parties like this is her friend so they felt some type of way towards her so she felt some type of way towards me i'm like how is she gonna retaliate against me for reporting her and properly notating the account and i was like and if y'all think y'all are about to give me a coaching or a mark on my record baby i'm not the one because i will go straight to osha and i will go straight to getting a lawyer i don't play those games don't play with me find you somebody to play with and so i said that but super duper nice to my manager because i knew that she was about to go to bats for me because bitch uh, i'm trying to keep my tongue very very demure but right now but it's very hard because i'm very upset y'all this situation traumatized me <laughs> i'm laughing about it now but in, in that situation and literally two three years later i was so traumatized by that situation it was it it was a lot so yeah so i'm just like so what can we do to fight this she was like well i am fighting it y'all this lady not only reported me to my manager she reported me to my manager's manager the director 
I'm yelling and forgetting that I stay in an apartment now. Yeah. She reported me to the director, y'all. And I was so mad because I'm like, yo, I'm not even mad that I got reported. I'm mad that the director sent me a request to submit to a write-up. Who do I look like? I'm not Boo Boo the Fool. You're not about to write me up, put this on my record. Then I can't apply for other promotions and stuff and get out of this abusive department. No, you're not about to do that to me. And I'm not about to accept it. Why would I get wrote up? Because I told the truth. So, y'all. And so my manager replayed the call. She was like, you didn't do nothing wrong. You didn't get mad at her. You didn't even seem, you know, like adamant about it you just accepted what she said and was like oh, okay and then notated the account and it was like you didn't even snitch on her to the customer that she was really refusing to take her call i'm like exactly exactly so when you're calling places and they're like oh i'm sorry i couldn't get in touch with someone so so and so probably said okay so yeah so <laughs> So they're like, you did really well. And so he wanted me to submit to a coaching and accept the write up. And baby, I was not about to do it. So then we had a phone meeting, all of us. And I was like, look, I'm not accepting a write up because somebody is retaliating against me for telling the truth and handling things with ethics. And when I said those words, they knew code of conduct and handbook had been read so they knew they could not write me up so they tried to harass me and manipulate me into submitting to that write-up because the agent wanted me wrote up so bad george lopez called in every freaking day for months to check up on me getting wrote up suspended or fired why are you so worried about me getting fired? You need to be worried about your mentality. You need to be worried about your morale. You need to be focusing on your moral compass because clearly you don't have one. So, y'all, <laughs> when I told my sister about this situation, y'all know how sisters be. I was like, look, I'm just trying to keep my calm, keep my cool because I still very much love my job, but I hate this department. I'm definitely leaving this department because I do not want to be under him. He's the director. If this was the director doing this to me, imagine what other people go through that don't fight back. So, yeah. So they had a meeting where we had to replay the call and we replayed the call and there was nothing against handbook code of conduct or nothing that he could write me up for. And he still wanted me to accept the write up. And I'm just looking at him, looking at her like, yeah, y'all got me messed up. So then it got to the point where he was threatening to write my manager up for not serving me the write up and for standing behind me and standing up for me against this lady that was calling in harassing her now because of something that George Lopez, George Lopez is the lady, because of what George Lopez came out her mouth and said. So when I tell y'all my manager is my manager was this old frail white lady. She was so sweet, so nice. I loved her. And she was coming into work every day red, sweating super duper bad, hair in a disarray, discombobulated because they were so adamant about writing the two of us up over this situation. And I'm not going to lie to y'all, after this situation and the prior situation I went through about being wrote up for good mornings, not saying good morning to people I didn't even know existed, mind you, never introduced themselves to me, never talked to me, and they tried to get me wrote up for not saying good morning after those two situations i used to come into work do my job and just leave like i tell y'all i was so done with that job that department i was so over it i was done like there was no emotion no nothing i'm just doing my job and getting off these phones that's it and i went from top 10 employee to like bottom hun like to the hundreds because i don't care no more i don't care no more y'all are harassing me and in the end I ended up not getting a coaching and not getting a write-up. It took two months to settle and they wanted her to speak to me. And she was like, I just feel like you shouldn't have left a note like that for my entire my entire office to see. I was like, ma'am, we are not told that y'all and y'all employees can see our notes we are told that our notes are for us to protect us so in this situation because you refuse to take her call i'm not going to tell her that so i notated it on the account as i'm supposed to but for you to be adamant about me getting wrote up about something that i'm supposed to do that's a lawsuit 
And I'm not gonna lie, I really should have sued the 1099 directly in her entire office for the harassment. Because when I say I was harassed for two months by her and the director, harassed. Okay, harassed. Um, but yeah. And after now, mind y'all, on this job, I had never missed not one day. I worked so I worked so much. I never missed a day. If anybody was out or needed time off and I was able to take their days, I took their days at least 20 hours every week. I'm taking somebody's hours to help out. That made me look at the company different. And I realized that I'm just a number and to save face for them, they'll definitely throw me under the bus the first chance they get. And that was the last chance they ever got because after that, I didn't play with them. I started keeping track of every phone calls, what I was told to do, how I'm told to write stuff up, report stuff. Like I literally have screenshot after screenshot. If you've ever seen Veronica, you got to be on your Veronica shit with these companies. But yeah. And... This is the story time about when George Lopez tried to get me fired. Thank you for watching.